Now then crew and welcome back to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now I'm actually right in the mix of building a little rig so I can pump out pistons on calipers at the bench uh, rather than have to do them on the vehicle um, you know, before I take the calipers off because sometimes it's not always practical uh, to do them outside. It might be raining or something. I want to get inside and, and you know, do it in the dry. And I thought, well, actually, part of making that rig, I've got to make a braided um, hydraulic hose, basically a braided brake pipe to go between the clutch master cylinder that I'm using and obviously whichever caliper it is that I'm working on. I thought, well, that could be a pretty useful video for people, actually, because um, a lot of motorcyclists, uh, and me inclusive, when I was in the UK, is I would play around with the bike and I'd change the brakes and I'd, I'd take off the original sort of rubber flexi pipes on the bike and I'd fit braided hoses. And a lot of our ATVs as well, we had to make up new pipes. So I ended up with a kit that I brought with me from the UK and you can, you can buy this kit online. I, they're not a sponsor and I've had this for years and they may not be in business anymore, but there's lots of very similar kits available. And this one is made by a company called Factory, Factory Image believe it or not, which is there, and I think on the lid, yes, there's some contact information, hang on a second, ooh, it's getting pretty brittle this box, I'm going to need a new one now, I think, there we are, one hinge left, okay, so this is the English phone number and details of the company, and... Yeah, reorder numbers. That's all the part numbers on there, look. And there's a phone number down here. So you might be able to find them online. Yeah, and you can order top-ups or order a whole kit. But in all honesty, that's the, the kit part number there, look. This is probably about 20 years old, so they probably aren't in business anymore. But I could be wrong. And I'm not in England anymore, so I won't be dealing with them. Uh, you, know, you can buy these kits in here in New Zealand as well. However... They are only legal to be used um, for off-road vehicles here in New Zealand. You're not allowed to use uh, the bolt-up type banjo fittings or unions, uh, a, bit like, a bit like that one there, look. You actually bolt these up, assemble them, that's how, that's how we can do it. I don't have a crimping machine, and no doubt neither will you, um, but you can make these ones at home. Now in some countries, and I believe still in England, you can these are still okay to use on the road. But they say here in New Zealand, if you can undo the union with the spanners, then it's illegal for road use, which seems a bit stupid, because right next to it is a banjo bolt that anybody can undo. <sighs> New Zealand, eh? It's a law unto themselves. Maybe we should get Queenie involved and get things sorted out. <laughs> Private joke. Okay, so <clears throat> to make up a braided brake pipe, you're going to need, obviously, some braided hose. And again, I've had this for quite a while. And that's basically what it looks like inside. It's got like a Teflon-y type inner um, and a braided outer. Now, if you're not careful... Um, you're going to stab your fingers with this, so be very, very careful when you're doing this kind of work. The first thing to do is to work out the length of the pipe that you need and, and, and obviously cut it. Now, cutting it is the first bone of contention. I watched a fair few YouTube videos uh, before I decided to do my own uh, covering this particular subject, and I even saw one pipe manufacturer... I'm not going to name them, and it wasn't the guys that set that make this kit, just to make that clear. Um, actually telling people to use side cutters to cut this pipe. Well, let me show you what happens when you use side cutters to cut this kind of pipe. Assuming, of course, you can actually cut through it, because it is, it is pretty tough stuff, to be honest. So, I'll just take it out while we'll get the... Uh, there we are, the retaining um, zip tie and a bit of red tape. So you can see there, look, that's being cut in a different way. So that's how it should look after it's been cut. And I'll show you how to do it in a minute. But if you use, use some snippers, and they need to be really sharp, but you should not do this. I keep stressing that. Here we go. You ready? Let's see if I've got enough strength in my hand now after I brought that bone in it. Ready? Ooh, sorry, camera. Right. So, what happened to the pipe? It got squashed and deformed. And the manufacturer's video that I was watching was saying, okay, now you need to get some pliers and make it round again. But the damage is already done. That pipe has been weakened. 
It's not the way to do it. What you will need to use, first of all, is some insulation tape. And that tape you put around the outside of the pipe. Let me show you. Okay, hopefully this is going to stay in focus because I'm working really close to the camera for you so you can see exactly what to do. Get your insulation tape and just put it around the pipe. And you want to go maybe, so let's say, three, three laps of the pipe. There we go, look, that's ample. Get rid of that. And all that's going to do is once we've cut the pipe, it's going to help to hold the braiding in place. <clears throat> so you're not going to stab your fingers and stuff. Right, next job is the trick. I'll show you the next bit. So, we've got the pipe taped up basically where we want to cut it. And we're going to obviously cut it through the middle point of that tape. To cut it, we're going to use an angle grinder. And there's a reason for that. It's not going to squash the pipe, uh, and that's the disc. So it's, it's called a slit disc in the UK, and they're originally designed for cutting stainless steel, I believe. And they are super thin, and they're very efficient at cutting through steel and other metals. Most of the metals. So we'll use the angle grinder, and we're going to cut straight through there, and that's going to allow the pipe to remain round, intact. It's not going to get squashed, and it's going to provide a really clean cut through the stainless steel braiding as well. Right, to the vise. Oh, and don't forget eye protection, because you're using a grinder. Right, we'll pop this in the vise, and we want to be relatively close to the edge of the jaws. And we're not going to crush the pipe, you know, there's, there's, this whole load is spread across a, a, a large length of that pipe. So that's fine, that's just enough to hold it in place. We're not, we've not distorted the pipe at all. Get the grinder, and we're going to cut right through the middle point of that insulation tape. Easy as that, and I'm sure most of you've got grinders at home. Doesn't need to be a rechargeable one. And you can see now, I can get it to focus for you. There you go. You can see the end of the pipe isn't distorted at all. And it's really, really important that you do it this way and not use side cutters. Even though one of the manufacturers told you to use side cutters, it's the wrong way of doing it, believe me. I can't stress that enough. Right, to the next step. <clears throat> right, so once you've cut the pipe, you'll notice it does flare a little bit when you cut. Now, yeah, sure, the inner's bang on, but the outer braiding does, because it, the tension's released, it does tend to just flare out a little bit, so that does cause us a bit of a problem. Let me explain. So the next job is to remove the nut from your union, your chosen union. Remove that from there, and inside is a little olive. So we'll just stick him back on there for now just for safekeeping. What we need to do, and it's pretty critical, is we need to get the nut onto the pipe. And at the moment, we've got our best possible chance of doing that, because later on we're going to be flaring that braiding out. So, here goes. Now, I often do it with the insulation in place, insulation tape, because it does help to hold that braiding in, in place a little bit. You might want a little flat screwdriver to help. And it's a bit fiddly, so you'll need lots of patience for this. There's definitely an art to making these up. But you can pull the braiding along the pipe and that will help to reduce its diameter a little bit. And if you want, you could use a little bit of spray on there, I suppose. As long as it doesn't react with the, uh, the pipe inside just to act as a lube. There we go, look, we're on. Right, so we'll get that down there. Phew! Yeah, you'll know what I mean when you've done it yourself. And there you are, look, you see, you can stab yourself quite easily with this stuff. It's not too bad as long as you're aware of the direction it's in. But if you hit it head on, it's going to go straight into your skin. Right, next job is we now need to remove that insulation and sometimes it's a bit easier said than done because you've lost the end by now. So we'll just hack through it with the old, uh, oh there we are, that might be the end. Maybe it was. Like I say, remove the insulation. 
in any way you choose. Here we go, look. Fantastic. Okay, so you can see now the braiding is just starting to splay away from the inner tube, and that's fine. We don't, I don't have a problem with that because that's what needs to happen. Now, if you've got a special tool, and if you're going to order this kit, you need to order one of these tools to go with it because you'll be very grateful that you did. They're not expensive and they make life so much easier. And what this does is it goes down the inside of the pipe and then actually splays out the, uh, the braided hose. You can see that, you can push it down and it splays it out even better, which is great. It's what we need to happen for the next step. So you can just give it a wiggle. Now, if you haven't got one of these, if you're a bit of a tight ass and didn't want to spend the money, then what you need to do is get a little flat screwdriver or ideally a pointy stick. Uh, ben uses those, my son. Uh, he makes them from bicycle spokes, but you could always grind a screwdriver down. And you can do the same thing. You can use a screwdriver to push that braiding back and away from the pipe. And it's really it's fundamental to getting the ceiling that all the braiding is away from that inner pipe. If there's one strand between the pipe and the olive, you'll have a leak. Okay, so the next job is to get hold of the olive, once you're happy with that, and place the olive over the pipe and down the tube. And again, just make damn sure all the braiding is on the outside of that olive. Now again, with this special tool, if you've got one, you can actually use that to help to locate that olive correctly. There we go, look. Looking pretty good, isn't it? And you want to make sure that the tube is all the way up to the back side of the olive. And by the looks of it, I think we are on that one. Let me get a little torch. Let's have a little look. Yes, you can see now that the inner pipe is right up against the olive. That's great. Always good to check. Because again, if it's not, you're going to have problems. Okay, so the next step, we're nearly there now. The next step is to get your union. And this little piece here goes down inside the inner pipe. Down like that. That's it. Now, like I said earlier on, this hose, you can't rotate it. So it's critical, especially when you're on the second one of these, that you get the angle right. Now sure, you can always adjust it later on, but ideally you don't want to be undoing and retightening that olive. Then get your nut, and we're going to slide the nut down and over the braiding. And it's a good idea just, just to turn it a little bit as you do that. Helps it to go over. There you go, look. And then hold the nut stationary and turn if you can, the union. You want to sort of minimise the amount that you're turning the nut because it tears up and ruffles up the uh, the braided stainless wires, and it can all you know get a bit messy if you're not careful. So, if you want to turn the actual union, initially at least, and then when you've got the angle correct, it's always a good idea to put it on the bike, check you've got the angle right, and when you have, that's when you want to nip it up tight. It's looking pretty good. Right, we'll pop this in the vise and uh, we'll finish it off. Right, it's a bit of cardboard so we don't damage the uh, the banjo union. I'll stick it up like that. And again, you'll you'll realise just how um, rigid this kind of brake pipe is. So we'll pop that in there. That's going to hold that in one set position for us, so we're not fighting it. And then we need a spanner to go on there. It looks like a twelve. Could be wrong. I am wrong. It's an 11. Jeez, who would use an 11 mil spanner? Right. So now we can just turn that, and you'll find that the hose will turn with it. That's just the nature of the beast. And just tighten it up until it's tight. I don't have a torque setting for this, but you can see how the hose will coil up on it.
And by the feel of it, that seems to be about 20 newton meters, but I could be overcooking it at that. It should come with some instructions when you order these, uh, these unions. Well, there you go. It's done. One fitting on the end of the pipe. And it came out pretty well. But the, you know, the proof of the pudding will be when you actually pressurize the system. Did you ensure that all those stainless steel strands were on the outside of the olive? If you've got one or more on the inside between the olive and the inner tube, the sort of the, the, the opaque colored tube, I think it's Teflon tube, I'm not sure. Uh, if, if there's one or more strands in there, you're guaranteed to get a leak. So you've got to be really careful when you're making up these joints. Also, that tool that I have, this one here, is extremely useful and makes it such an easy job. And it actually does two different sizes. This one, this one actually comes apart. And inside, it's got the two different ends. So it'll do a larger bore pipe and the size that we just did. Yeah, it's nice aluminium, anodized. Can't go wrong, really. Looks cool in the workshop. Does the job. Hasn't been used for probably about 10 years. <laughs> Okay, crew, well, hopefully you found that video uh, entertaining, most likely, and also helpful. And it is extremely important that if you're going to be replacing the brake lines on your motorcycle or your car, and you're going to be using these home, you know, the, the ones that you can tighten up and make yourself, with it being part of your braking system, you want to make damn sure you get it right. You don't want leaks, you know. You, your brakes could fail on you. So do take your time and make sure that you've followed all the instructions that I've given you. But also, please do check all manufacturers' instructions as well, because what I've told you, it may vary in their sp uh, specific um, brand or type of braided hose and unions. They do vary a little bit. So this is more of a generic kind of, uh, you know, how-to video. All right, chaps, well, if you found this video helpful, why not click on the subscribe button? You'll see a little gear icon turn up. Click on the gear icon, and then you can tick the box and turn on notifications. Uh, you'll also find me on Facebook, Instagram, Google+, and Twitter. Feel free to communicate through any of those uh, portals. Uh, but first point of contact, if you don't mind, through the comments on YouTube. Uh, there's also a new Patreon page. You can go onto there and read all about how the Andrew Mechanic YouTube channel came to be. And uh, you'll see up-and-coming future projects announced on there. You know, what's going to happen to the channel over the next three to six months, because it, it is growing pretty quick at the moment. All right, chaps. Oh, one last thing. If you fancy donating, you can, again, you can do that through the Patreon page. All right, crew. Until next time, cheers. Over and out.